I wish I could wake up one day and see Gaza swallowed by the sea. This phrase came as a text from former Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, and has been echoed as a meaning by most leaders of the occupying state since its inception until today. It is this fact that embodies Gaza's long history of resisting the occupation. It was from this that the first Palestinian Intifada broke out, and it was from the womb of that Intifada that the Islamic resistance movement Hamas was born, about half a century ago, as a national liberation movement that afflicts the occupation and reveals its barbarism to the whole world. Here we will tell the story of Gaza Hashem, Gazado or Hazani, and other names that have been given throughout the ages to the Gaza Strip, which became the first Palestinian territory to force the Israeli occupation to withdraw from it since the Nakba of 1948. The sector that the occupation army currently wants to invade by land, but is afraid of the cemetery that awaits its troops. The Gaza Strip. History and Numbers. The Gaza Strip is a narrow coastal strip with a total area of only 360 square kilometers and represents 1.33% of the area of historical Palestine. It is located in the southern area of the Palestinian coastal plain on the Mediterranean Sea. The Gaza Strip is a narrow strip 41 kilometers long from north to south, while its width varies between 5 and 15 kilometers, bordered to the north and east by what is now known as the State of Israel, and to the southwest by the Egyptian Sinai Peninsula. The Gaza Strip is now called after its largest city, Gaza City, but it has borne multiple names throughout its history of more than 5,000 years, during which many invaders passed through it, they all left, and Gaza remained steadfast and will remain. The Persians called the Strip Hazado, the Canaanites called it Hazani, the ancient Egyptians called it Gazado, while the Arabs called it Gaza Hashem after Hashem ibn Abd Manaf, the grandfather of the Ring of Messengers and their Imam Muhammad ibn Abdullah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Throughout the ages, the geographical location of Gaza City has been of particular importance, since it is located on the most important trade routes in the ancient world, a road that started from Hadramaut and Yemen and ended in India, and Gaza had great military importance, being the link between Egypt and the Levant. The location of Gaza, on the edge of the fertile lands with fresh water, which comes directly after the Sinai Desert, had an important impact on the existence, survival and importance of Gaza, as it is the natural stop for those coming from Arab Egypt heading to the Levant, and it is the last stop for everyone coming from the Levant and his destination Egypt, it was the junction of convoys before entering the desert, where they complete what they need before passing through the desert on their way to Egypt. Now the Gaza Strip consists of about 44 residential communities, most notably Gaza City, Rafa, Jabalia, Nuzirat, Bait Lahia, Bait Hanoun, Burij and others, and the population of the Strip is more than 2.3 million people, and it is considered one of the most populous areas in the world, and this fact is a direct cause of the Palestinian Nakba in 1948. The Catastrophe of 1948. Displacement Towards Gaza. On that day in May 1948, which has become a stain on humanity, especially that civilized, West, the establishment of the State of Israel was announced, after the British carved out the bulk of Palestine and gave it to the Jews, to establish an occupation state on it, which is known as the Palestinian Nakba. Jewish gangs forcibly displaced Palestinians from their cities in Jaffa, Haifa, Beersheba and other cities of Palestine, and many of them were displaced to the Gaza Strip, the vast majority of whose population today is displaced from their homes, villages and Palestinian cities. More than 75% of the Gaza Strip's population lives in residential communities that used to be eight refugee camps, namely Rafa Camp, Khan Yunus Camp, the Yalbala Camp, Nuzarat Camp, Beach Camp, Magatzi Camp, Al Buresh Camp, Jabalia Camp. Israel did not occupy the Gaza Strip in 1948, but the Strip has suffered, as has all of Palestine since that date. The Strip's limited space and abundant agricultural resources have been severely strained by the large number of displaced people. Many studies conducted by international and UN institutions point to the tragic conditions, especially in the eight camps in the Gaza Strip, due to the high population density, infant mortality in the Gaza Strip is one of the highest rates in the world, poverty and deprivation are the dominant situation among the people of Gaza, as dependency rates rise to more than six individuals, and unemployment reaches about 60% of the total Palestinian workforce there. The Strip remained under Egyptian administration from the Nakba of 1948 until the War of 1967, and the headquarters of the administrative governor of the Strip was located in Gaza City, where it was the headquarters of the Southern Brigade in Palestine during the British Mandate, 1920-1948, and the city became the capital of the Strip. Israel entered the Strip only briefly in 1956, during the British-French aggression against Egypt, in which Israel participated, so it entered the Gaza Strip and the Sinai Peninsula as well, but soon withdrew and the Strip returned to Egyptian administration. Israel occupies the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip fell under Israeli occupation during the June 5, 1967 war, and Israel, as usual, began building settlements in the Strip in the hope of changing the demographic reality there, and imposing a new order that ends the hopes of the Palestinians to establish their independent state in the future. 
Since the first day of the occupation of the Gaza Strip, the Israeli army has sought to subjugate the people of Gaza and impose the Israeli fate accompli on the Palestinian people, as it did with the rest of the occupied Palestinian cities and villages, but the Gazan society, representing the Palestinian people as a whole, and the resistance forces in the Strip, have demonstrated an extraordinary ability to withstand and break the will of the enemy, and the people of Gaza have had a prominent role in the Palestinian struggle against the occupation since the first bullet of the resistance was fired in early 1965. The Gaza Strip fell prey to Israeli policies during the period from 1967 to 2005, which led to a worsening of the demographic and economic conditions beyond words. Since the beginning of the occupation in June 1967, Israel has pursued ruthless policies, from land confiscation, illegal settlement and eviction of landowners, to blatant discrimination and racist laws, which have inflicted enormous suffering on Palestinians and deprived them of their basic rights, Amnesty International said in a report entitled, The Israeli Occupation, 50 Years of Land Dispossession. This report, along with hundreds and possibly thousands of reports from international organizations and institutions, monitored how the Israeli occupation has affected all aspects and aspects of the daily life of Palestinians in the occupied territories, the West Bank, East Jerusalem and the Gaza Strip. The occupation decides whether a Palestinian can go to work, to school, or to travel abroad, and when and how they do so, not only that, but the occupation forces decide whether, when and how a Palestinian can visit his relatives, work to earn his living, participate in a protest demonstration, go to his agricultural land to work, or even get electricity or any supply of clean water, which means living daily in fear and humiliation, and making the life of a Palestinian hostage to the occupation. Before we go any further, let me just say that you are at the proper place if you enjoy documentaries and biographies. As for your subscription, it is up to how satisfied you are with our content. Your like for the video contributes to disseminating it to a larger number of people. I am grateful. Resistance to occupation. But the Palestinians in the occupied territories, including the Gaza Strip, of course, did not succumb to the occupation, and they have a history of steadfastness. The struggle, steadfastness and resistance to the occupation took many forms, including the prisoners' non-stop attempts to escape from Israeli prisons. The stories of the escape of Palestinian prisoners in Israeli prisons are closely linked to the history of the Palestinian struggle itself, and represent a key area in the ongoing battle to liberate Palestine from the grip of occupation. This was expressed by one of the most famous Palestinians in the field of escaping from Israeli prisons, Hamza Yunus. Yunus managed to escape many times from the Israeli occupation prisons. In his book about the escape from Ramla prison, Yunus explained why the escape formed an obsession, he said that for him it was a principled position that he had to take otherwise it might end. Can I win against Israel on my own I am not armed and not even trained in weapons, can I score a victory over the arsenal of weapons, aircraft, the state of the army, police, security and trail dogs. One of the prominent stories in this path of resistance is the operation of the Great Escape from the Gaza Central Prison in 1987, during which the prisoner Mizbah al suri managed to cut the bars of the laundry window in the central detention center, using a half-iron saw that one of his friends in the Fino Loaf smuggled to him during the visit, and with the help of two detainees, Abdul Salam Abu al-Sarhad and Imad al-Din Awad Shahada, they did not escape with him because they were not serving a life sentence like him, and their prison term was almost over. But al suri did not escape from prison alone, but in the company of five prisoners sentenced to life, to become the number six, in one of the most prominent escapes that were carried out over a period of weeks in difficult conditions, culminating in the success of escaping through the window whose bars took between three and seven days, according to multiple accounts. According to the account of the former prisoner Abu al Sarhad, one of the six in an interview with the military media of the Jerusalem brigades, they were working on cutting the window bars in the bathroom for a short time between 10 to 13 minutes at a time, trying not to draw the attention of the rest of the prisoners. On the night of Sunday, May 17, 1987, they managed to cut the bars of the window completely, and when the cutting process was completed, al suri told his fellow five other high-sentence prisoners of his intention to escape to join him in it. 2005, the Gaza Strip struggle does not stop against the occupation. About seven months after the great escape from the Gaza Central Prison, the Gaza Strip witnessed the outbreak of the first Palestinian Intifada in 1987, which was known as the Al-Aqsa Intifada, and represents a major stop on the road of steadfastness and Palestinian struggle. On December 8, 1987, a car carrying Palestinian workers from Jabalia camp was run over by an Israeli truck, which led to the death of four Palestinian workers. An incident that may have seemed ordinary and imminent to happen, but knowing the identity of the Israeli truck driver, a settler whose father was stabbed in the Gaza market two days before the incident, aroused feelings that are congested from the ground up because of the non-stop attacks by settlers and occupation forces alike. 
The funeral of the four martyrs turned into a spontaneous demonstration during which Palestinians threw stones at an occupation military post in Jabalia, and the occupation soldiers responded with gunfire, but this did not intimidate the protesters. The stone intifada broke out in all the Palestinian territories, which are congested from the ground up and reject the occupation and its incessant criminality. From the womb of the Intifada, the Islamic resistance movement Hamas was born as a national liberation movement, and that was on December 14, 1987. The Stone Intifada lasted for years, resulted in the Madrid Peace Conference and the subsequent behind-the-scenes talks between the leadership of the Palestine Liberation Organization led by the late Yasser Arafat, and the American-mediated occupation, which eventually culminated in the Oslo Accords and the establishment of the Palestinian Authority, in preparation for the establishment of an independent state of Palestine on the territories occupied in 1967, East Jerusalem, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, and that state was supposed to see the light within five years, i.e. in 1999. But the occupation has not respected those agreements, nor stopped its settlement projects, nor its racist and repressive policies towards the Palestinians, and at the same time the march of struggle has not stopped, even if there is a path led by the PA entitled Negotiation. The struggle and resistance to the occupation, which expanded into the construction of settlements, continued with the aim of imposing a fait accompli, and the Gaza Strip turned into a major stronghold of the resistance, where the operations against the forces of the occupation army, police and settlers did not stop, stabbing, running over, throwing stones or Molotov cocktails, without succeeding live bullets, incendiary bombs and other deadly weapons deter the people of the Strip, as is also the case in the West Bank, although Gaza has become a continuous headache of the occupation. Gaza has turned into a thorn in the side of the occupation, to the extent that it comes to the saying, I wish I would wake up one day and see Gaza swallowed by the sea, which came from the words of former Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, while it has been echoed as a meaning by most leaders of the occupation state since its inception until today, which represents the embodiment of Gaza's resistance to occupation. When Ariel Sharon, the former Prime Minister of the Occupying Power, sparked the Al-Aqsa Intifada in 2000, when he defied everyone and stormed the Al-Aqsa Mosque, Gaza forced him to withdraw from it under the weight of the attacks of the resistance that did not stop, and the occupation army and settlers suffered heavy human and material losses, becoming the first Palestinian territory from which Israel was forced to withdraw since the Nakba in 1948. Throughout the years of the Al-Aqsa Intifada, Israel was unable to impose absolute control over the Gaza Strip, nor to protect settlers in the Strip, Israel did not withdraw from the Gaza Strip in 2005 in implementation of the agreements it had signed, knowing that the Oslo Accords with the Palestinian Authority provided for withdrawal from the occupied territories in accordance with international resolutions, East Jerusalem, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, within only five years, but was forced to withdraw from them due to armed resistance.